Breaking tonight, doubts continue to grow around the Duke and Duchess of Sussex's bombshell claim that they were pursued in a, quote, near catastrophic car chase by paparazzi in New York last night. The couple's sensational, I think, farcical statement has quickly unraveled tonight as the NYPD and New York's left wing mayor, Eric Adams, cast doubt on whether it could be described as a car chase at all. And the driver of the taxi that the pair bizarrely sought refuge in, Sonny Singh, told the Washington Post, I don't think I would call it a chase. I never felt like I was in danger. It wasn't like a car chase in a movie. They were quiet and seemed scared, but it's New York. It's safe. But Prince Harry seems keen not to let facts get in the way of a good story, ramping up the victimhood rhetoric. The Duke has told friends, this is in the Times newspaper, it was the closest I have ever felt to understanding what happened on the night his mother Diana died. Well, to react, I'm joined now live by Princess Diana's former butler, her rock, Paul Burrell. Paul, what do you make of Harry comparing this car chase, which the taxi driver says isn't a car chase, to the night his mother died? Dan, here we go again. I personally think it's wrong, it's offensive to make any comparison with a car chase in Manhattan to one in Paris. They were totally different circumstances. Diana was actually avoiding the press the night she died. Meghan and Harry were courting the press on the night that they had their car chase in Manhattan. And, you know, I don't want any harm to come to Meghan and Harry, and I'm a great supporter of our working members of the royal family. But I find it very hard to believe all the facts are being issued from Harry's spokesperson, this near catastrophic car chase, the relentless pursuit for two hours. I think it's total exaggeration. Even the mayor of New York, as you've just seen, has disputed those facts. It sounds to me like a farce and an opportunity to exaggerate the truth again and to elevate Brand Sussex again after the coronation, after Princess Princess Anne so eloquently obliterated Harry's face for half the coronation with her plume. I I think this this is complete fabrication. It's a complete story that they are willing to spin a PR exercise to say, hey, look at us, we're vulnerable, we are in danger, and when we come to England, we need security. I think that's what it's all about. Paul Burrell, none of this stacks up, does it? Because if you feel like you were genuinely at threat in New York, the last Mm -hmm. thing you're going to do is jump into a yellow cab, because let me tell you, those drivers are out of control. They might get you somewhere quickly, but they're out of control. They're not very safe cabs to be in. Yeah. And the other like thing you, Dan, is, yeah, we know New York. We know yeah. that you can't drive a block without being stopped. Yes. And if you're in a car chase or you're being pursued, you go to a safe house. You go yeah. to an underground exactly. car park. You go into a hotel. You go to somewhere where you're safe. No, this couple decided to leave by the back door and exaggerate their their affair by telling the paparazzi where. We're going through the back door, not the front door, which we came in. If they'd left by the front door and given the press their photographs, which they wanted, all would be well. But no, this becomes an exaggerated, confluted sort of engagement, which becomes exciting for Brand Sussex. The other thing is, Paul, we have to point out this would never have happened in the UK. There are deals no. between the media and members of the royal family to offer the mm. sort of protection that you simply don't get in America. So this is yes. why lots of people warned Harry and Meghan before they went mm. to the US. You actually don't know what you're letting yourself in for, guys. Absolutely. They left the security of the royal family and royalty protection. They left all that behind for what? For what? Nothing. They have to now hire their own security firm to keep them safe. The Metropolitan Police Force are not there to protect Harry and Meghan when they come to England. They're there to protect the public. The taxpayer pay for the Metropolitan Police Force. So if they come to this country again, which I very much doubt, they will have to find their own security. They will. They will indeed. Uh, But, Paul, you say this is a complete 
fabrication as far as you're concerned? Yes. I think it's a PR exercise to elevate Harry and Meghan back into a prominent position after this wonderful coronation which we've had in this country, which which showcases the working members of the royal family, not and, Harry and, and Meghan. And just finally, Paul, is Harry wrong to allow sources close to him to brief to the Times newspaper tonight that yes. the incident in New York reminded him of how it must have felt for his mother, Diana, your close friend on the night she died. It, it, it is so wrong. It's upsetting. It, it's wrong for Harry to do this. He knows it's wrong. He must know it's wrong. It's not only upsetting to me, and it's upsetting to millions of people watching this show. It's, it's people around the world, his brother and his father. Why is he doing this? What, stop it, Harry because it's not right. Strong message tonight from Paul Burrell, Diana's Rock. Thank you so much, Paul. We'll speak next week.